okay, there's an awakening, right? Because that's your saboteur. And that saboteur is your repelling energy. So if my negative beliefs are the t-shirts that I'm wearing, what would yours say? <laughs> what would yours say across your chest or across your back if that was your negative belief? I'm stupid. I don't deserve it. I haven't worked hard enough. I'm... Well, I'm my mama, la, 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 right? And that energy, that energy is what goes out before us. If we believe we can have it, if we believe we're aligned with it, if our knower knows what energy goes out in front of us. Certainty? Would that be a certainty energy? Would that be confidence? Pardon me? Worthiness. worthiness? Absolute worthiness. How about I'm smart? How about I can create this? How about I'm well connected? How about I have help on both sides? Both sides of this, both the unconscious and the conscious. How about I have help both on earth and in heaven? I have a whole tribe, not just a team. I have a whole tribe of helpers that's in alignment with my desire because I'm in alignment with my purpose. My five-year-old knower is well and alive. Right? I remember being five years old and we were doing a program up on stage at church. And we were doing this little dance, right? Now I'm on the front row. And guess what I'm doing? I'm looking behind me because I'm worried about how bad all the people behind me are messing up. <laughs> and guess who's messing up the worst? <laughs> me. So what was my five-year-old worried about? Everybody else. And how has that been a pattern of creation in my life? I learned I had no idea when I was little that I wanted to grow up and be a healer. That wasn't even in our vocabulary. 58, whatever, years ago. <laughs> Nobody said, oh, I'm going to grow up and be a healer. Now the little kids can grow up and say that. There are kids that have that option. There are little kids that now work with stones and bless stones and give blessings. There are little kids that have words of wisdom that come to them. They're so well connected. Right? They're so in touch and so in tune because they have permission to be. So... I didn't know what I was going to be, but I knew that I was worried about everybody else. That's kind of what a healer does, right? We worry about everybody else except ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Ask any healer. When was the last time they took care of themselves? All right. All right. So if you happen to have a negative core belief that you need to process... If you just discovered that in the last little bit, I want you to be able to know that I know there's lots of ways to process those beliefs, but I also want to put a plug in here for Novichi. And the reason I want to put a plug in here for Novichi is because Novichi doesn't just go back and do one event. Novichi goes back and does all of the events that are associated with that negative core belief. So it says, if you have this, um, now I have to see if, I'm, if I can do the mic and the, if I can do two wands in my hand. So if I'm, <laughs> right. So this is our mind, right? And before the age of, let's say, seven or eight years old, everything that goes into our mind goes in as a belief. 
So if we're, fi if we're five and we're having a hard time tying our shoes and somebody says to us, what's the matter, you dummy? How come those shoes aren't tied? Then that goes in as a question mark. I'm dumb. With a question mark. But if somebody grabs us by the arm, kicks us in the fanny and says, you stupid kids, why, why isn't that shoe tied? That goes in with what? Trauma. And all of a sudden, that's no longer a question mark. That is an exclamation mark. I'm dumb. Does that ever happen? Does it happen in 2015? Yeah, it's not supposed to happen, but it happens. And as perceptive and as, as sensitive as our little kids are now, it actually happens more. Because even if you think it, they feel it and perceive it. So, I'm dumb goes in with an exclamation mark. What happens along about the age of eight or nine years old is that we develop this thing called a critical factor that now divides our conscious mind from our subconscious mind. Conscious mind being our thinking mind and our subconscious mind being our feeling mind. So we have all these emotions and behind these emotions we have our belief systems. And those belief systems now are embedded in there and they become part of our subconscious mind. Does that mean we know about them or we don't know about them? Don't we don't know about them. But if this is only 12% of my mind and this is 88% of my mind, which part's going to win? The 88% is going to win. So as we process these beliefs, guess what? We're actually moving this line of consciousness further and further and further back so that we have more and more choice about which side's going to win. And that's the beautiful part about processing our beliefs, is being able to have more personal control and authority over our life. More choice greater agency, more freedom, more ability to create, less and less saboteurs, less and less repelling t-shirts to wear, right? And we're just like this lady up here in the front of the last thing who did a drawing and drew her own name for something she wanted. That was the law of attraction in immediately being fulfilled that we witnessed a miracle in my mind. Did anybody expect that? No. Of course, the miracle says a miracle is anything more than you expected. That was more than I expected. It's more than we all expected, right? It was more than she expected. So what I'm saying is that when you are in alignment, when these are destroyed, when these negative core beliefs are destroyed and we're no longer wearing our repelling energy and we are in alignment with the things that we want, then we get to create. We get to absolutely create in a free line of traffic, right? Why do we call them freeways? No stopping. No stopping. No interference, you can go fast on the freeway, right? Unless it's five o'clock in Salt Lake City. Okay. It's by my foot, oh, thank you. Okay. That looked like I was my age, didn't it, when I bent over? <laughs> All right, how am I doing for time? I'm good? All right. Okay, because now I'm going to turn to page two. <laughs> so when you understand the fundamental law of attraction, when you understand it and your saboteurs, 
your repelling energy is gone, right? Then it's going to work. It has to work. It's a law. It's a law, right? When you're dealing with the fundamental laws of nature, it doesn't matter if you understand how these laws work. The laws don't care if you understand physics. Gravity, light, thought, and other natural laws do not differentiate between a terrible person and a saint. They don't. It doesn't matter what you believe or comprehend about the laws. They just work anyway. The fundamental laws of nature do not judge you. You judge you. Okay? So when you say, and, and if you had really good parenting, your parents said you can be anything you want to be when you grow up. By the way, how many of us had parents who said that? I can count them on one hand. <laughs> the rest of us didn't. But here's the deal. When you believe, when your beliefs are in alignment with your knower, you get to create anything you want. So pure thought is real. Use it. A hammer is real. You can drive nails with it. A car is real. You can drive places with it. Thoughts are real and they create things in an unlimited way. So now that we have been able to get you to that place where you can think what it is that you desire, I want you to take just a few seconds and I want you to think about the thing that you desire now. I want you to think about that thing that you really truly desire. And I want you to go to the ticket booth in your mind and I want you to buy a ticket to that destination. So I want you to just like say, okay, here I am, I'm gonna travel this path and I'm going to buy a ticket to that destination. Now there are some long trips and there are some short trips, right? But nevertheless, I'm buying the ticket to get to my destination, right? And I want you to love that destination. Okay? So what does it mean to love that destination? Our knower knows now we want our lover to love it. Right? Do you have a lover in there? <laughs> Are you in touch with your lover? Your inner lover? Yeah? Yeah? So I want you to love your destination. I want you to love what it is that you desire because it is your heart's desire. And I want you to marry it. <laughs> That's a pretty strong word, isn't it? What does that mean? What does that married word mean? Commit. Commit. What else? What's another married word? Cherish. Cherish. What else? <laughs> Till death do you part. <laughs> yeah. You're true to that. You're true to that. What else? What else? Commitment. What else? Unconditional love. United. Promise. Integrated. Take care of it. Right? Pretty special word, isn't it? it? Means a lot to a lot of people, right here, right? Some of us resist it. Some of us embrace it. Some of us are like, no, not the married word, right, Jer? <laughs> so I want you to marry your intention with love. So I want you to think. This is your affirmation. I'm in my future. And in my future, I am. And I want you to state what that is that you've just created in your mind. The desire of your heart. I am in my future, and in my future, I am. Yes? Um, 
Do you want something specific or something more general? Um, well, when you, I don't know, like abundance. Yeah. Like I am abundant versus like I am wealthy or I am happy. I don't know. Is that better? You're asking me? My opinion is go for whatever you want. If you want it to be specific, go specific. If you want it to be general and unspecific, it's going to be more general and it's going to pick up a lot of other things. So I would go more specific because I'm one of those people that I'm, I'm a little bit OCD, so I would go specific, right? If, I'm, if I was laid back and I could just go with the flow all the time, I'd probably be a little more general and I'd probably see the magic in every part of my life, right? So I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying be who you are. Go your own way. What is good? Now that you have that thing in your mind, right? You all have that thing in your mind, right? Now I want you to say, I am very grateful. I am very grateful for this beautiful thing this beautiful, wonderful relationship, my beautiful health. I'm so grateful for the job and my soul purpose and the things I get to do every day that fulfill me and fill me up and bring me joy. And I'm so grateful for that. And I want you to imagine that scene just as happy as you can. I want you to feel very alive to it. I want you to feel it touch it. It feels like what? It sounds like what? Each scene, just as happy as I can imagine it. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to take a little couple notes, right? Because I really want you to have this. Me and God want you to have this. <laughs> right? We do. God wants us to be happy. Whatever God looks like to you. So, now your assignment. All right? Did we just get to have it float to us? No. We can. It just floated to this gal right here in the front. Floated right out of the box and she got her wish. Right? It can float to us. But if it's a life and a soul purpose that you want, then I'm asking you to create a discipline. Okay? And I want you to partner with your now inner creator as well as your divine creator. That's They're both divine or however you think of it. Some of us think outside the box. But I want you to partner with your creator. And every day, or even more often, ask, what is my next step? What do I get to do today to bring me my desire of my heart? What is my next step? And I want you to feel inspired as you take action. What does inspired mean? In spirit. Inspired as you take action. Follow through. Once you get that idea, Follow through. Do it. Do it. And if you don't, if you can't do it, at least write it down so you can get back to it, right? Because we, we sometimes get busy and forget our inspirations. So please, every action intensifies your intent. Every action intensifies your intent. So every time you take a deliberate action, you intensify, and that thought, and that feeling, and that whole desire is magnetized to you. Every action puts more energy in motion. 
So the last thing I want to say is enjoy the journey and continue in gratitude. Look for the miracles and the little things as well as the big things. Acknowledge those miracles. Celebrate those miracles and celebrate your accomplishments along the way. And as you celebrate, that adds more and more intensity to your desired outcome. Thanks so much for being here today. Um, we, are, we have prime real estate back here. I think we have two booths put together. We'd love for you to come back and uh, get familiar with Novichi. We actually have our giving away some sample sessions. So thank you very much. Let's do that right now. Let's, let's have you draw it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go quantum, dude!